can take you anywhere Turn the pages and you'll be there Come on, join us, you'll see We're reading with Kevin joining us for Read with Carolee. We are in season two. Oh my gosh, I cannot thank you enough for joining me on this journey and to kick off season two, we're coming out fighting with another, one of our favorite authors, Adam T. Newman. Yeah. <laughs> Adam, yeah, you're coming out fighting here. I'm fighting, I'm fighting, <laughs> right? I've been training. I've been training for this moment. I've been training all week. I'm ready to rock and roll and read with you guys. Yes. And in this corner, <laughs> we have Adam T. Newman. And he is going to be reading for us how to fight a cold. That's right. Yes. So Adam, without further ado, I'm going to have you take it away. You got it. You got it. Now, I am so happy to be here. I'm totally pumped up. And I wanted to remind all my friends out there, all the boys, all the girls, all the families that are watching to remember my stories are filled. And I mean filled with rhyming words. And every time you hear me read a rhyming word, do you know what I want you guys to do? I want you to take this hand. That's right, Carrie Lee, or take that hand, and I want you to break, oh Jesus, my goodness, you want to take off these gloves, no one wants to get hurt. You want to take this hand or this hand, bring it to your ear like that, and just go wiggle, 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 really loud. Carrie Lee, can I hear you say wiggle, wiggle, wiggle? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle! Yes, and that's what I want all of my friends to do. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Don't punch yourself in the face. We don't need any of that. So without further ado, I am going to read the second book that I have ever written in my entire life called How to Fight a Cold. You ready, boys and girls? Remember, every time you hear a rhyming word, give me a loud wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And by the way, I am sitting in the world's squeakiest chair. If you hear me wiggling and moving and you hear a little toot or something, it's not me. It's definitely not from the bean burrito I may or may not have had the other night. It is the chair. All right, here we go, boys and girls. How to Fight a Cold by me, author Adam T. Newman. Ding, 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 ding. I woke up in the morning. I had boogers galore. My nose was super stuffy, and my throat was really sore. I had a raspy voice, which made me sound old. You're staying home from school, Mom said. You caught a cold. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I caught a cold? How? When? Where? Now I am your mother. And mothers know best. In order to fight that cold, you'll need lots of rest. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Mommy fluffed up my pillows, took me back into bed. And before leaving my room, she gave me a kiss on the head. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You guys are doing great. I love it. How do I fight a cold? Do I need to learn some Kung Fu? My nose is completely stuffed up. Maybe I'll... Uh, 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 oh, I'm sorry about that. Sorry if it messed up your screen right there. I had a pounding headache. I let out a cough. My eyes felt very heavy. But before I dozed off, do 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 wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. From underneath my pillow, a hairy creature crept out. It had a greenish-blue tongue ah, and an elephant-like snout. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It looked me in the eye and threw me some clothes. Then it flared out its nostril 
and sucked me in through its nose. <sighs> That's disgusting. The inside of its nose was dark. The ground was pretty mushy. I tripped over a giant booger and I landed on my tushy. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Hey, watch it, kid. A booger rolled over and yelled. He appeared old and crusty, and his breath really smelled. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. My name is Boogie, and I know I look old, but I'm going to train you to fight that tough cold. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. He pushed me into a building. It smelled like a sweaty gym. Time to prepare you for your fight. Let the training begin. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Boogie had me do push-ups and sit-ups, jumping jacks and karate. I took a quick break from the speed bag because they had to use the potty. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Flush, flush, flush a room. Then we raced into a room that smelled like freshly cut roses. Inside there were hundreds of flying stuffy noses. He threw me a box of tissues and shouted, Clean these out! I used my arms to reach deep into each boogery snout. Ew, gross, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Keep up the good work, he said. My booty was getting kicked. Of all the boogers in this nose, he's the one I picked. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Then he threw me my gloves. The event was finally here. As I hopped into the ring, the crowd started to cheer. Let's go, fighter! Now, boys and girls, I'm going to need your help on this part. I'm going to say, let's go, fighter! And I want you, yes, you, I see you right there. I want you to scream as loud as you can. I want you to say cold. So I'm going to say let's go fight a, and you are going to say cold. Let's try it out. The crowd started to cheer. Let's go fight a cold. But my confidence didn't last long. It didn't last long at all. When I stared at my opponent, well, I felt pretty small. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Why do you think he felt pretty small? He was all ready for the fight. Maybe because the cold had enormous spiky wings and extremely hairy toes. I started to cry when I saw its red eye and its giant pierced nose. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Man, this guy looks tough. I don't want to get in a ring with that guy. This starting bell rang. Now, boys and girls, I'm going to need your help again. I'm going to say the starting bell ring, and I want you to take one finger like this and bring it in the air like that. And I'm going to say the starting bell ring, and I want you guys to go ding, just like that. You're in the bell. Let's try it out. The starting bell rang. Ding. I nearly peed in my pants. If I could distract this ugly creature, I just may have a chance. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So before I was pummeled and smashed into the ground, I held out my gloves and screamed, Stop! Wanna know what I found? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Kapow! Colds do not listen. <laughs> no, they don't. His mouth opened wide. He let out a roar. Drink this, Boogie shouted, sliding me chicken soup on the floor. I gobbled up the soup. I tossed out the bowl, just as the big, mighty cold swallowed me whole. I'm going to say gulp, and I want you guys to go, ah! Think you could do that? I know you can. He swallowed me whole. Gulp. As I slid down his throat, I began to feel great. I was getting bigger and stronger. Was it the soup I just ate? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I grew more than five times my size. I busted out of my top. 
if I got any bigger inside here, this belly would. Ooh, this belly would. What is it? This belly would pop. When I opened my eyes, Mom was cleaning tissues off the floor. My nose wasn't super stuffy. My throat was no longer sore. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Mommy gave me a look and said very bold, you're going to school today, love. You fought that cold. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I fought a cold. Woohoo! I just hope he doesn't want a rematch. Hmm. The end. And that, my friends, is the story of how to fight a cold by me, author Adam T. Newman. Hey everyone, I'm Derek Taylor Kent. And I'm Sherry Fink, and we're celebrating the second season of the Read with Carrie Lee show. You might remember me from the first season when I read The Little Dragon. And I read Dinosaur Derby with you. I know there's going to be lots more fun reading adventures on the Read with Carrie Lee show this season. Happy, Happy reading! I know this is cold and flu season right now, so I hope that all of our friends took some pointers on how to fight a cold. <laughs> we gotta stay healthy, fight that tough cold, so you can read some more books and watch the Carrie Lee Show. Yes, absolutely. And I saw that How to Fight a Cold was basically the sequel to How to Catch a Cold, That's which cool. you read the last time. So yes, we have had our our first um our first sequel. Yeah. Our first sequel. First so sequel. When I started writing How to Catch a Cold, by the way, boys and girls, if you're just tuning in for the first time, you can revisit previous episodes and catch me reading How to Catch a Cold. But when I was writing this story, it was so, I had so many wonderful ideas that it, it was enough for actually two books. So both books are standalone. You can read them separately. They don't have to go together, but mm -hmm. they certainly can. And that's sort of uh, how the idea came to be. So yeah, we, we don't want to catch colds. And if you do catch a cold, we certainly want to help fight them and be done with them because we want everyone happy and healthy, right? Absolutely. You know, we have, and you know, you have such a fan base that we have had some people write in and wanted to ask you, Adam T. Newman, some questions. So yes, we're trying to get very interactive here in season two and make sure that we get um, all your questions answered. So the first question was, um, how do you come up with the names um, of your characters? Well, that's, that is actually one of the easiest questions you could have thrown at me. So I base all of my stories on my children. The girl who lost her voice is my daughter, Carly, who spells her name very close to someone we know. And the boy in, this, in the stories is based on my son, Tyler. So um, in, not in these two books, but in future books, you will hear their names. And uh -huh. I also started adding a lot of their friends. I started adding cousins. I started creating a lot of also uh, characters just out of thin air that are based on people or experiences I know. So that's where I come up with the names. It's just every day, you know, maybe there's a Carrie Lee uh, character in the works. I don't know. Man. Oh. Does she have a tutu? You know, I went to a school. <laughs> I did, well, she definitely will if she's in there. But I <laughs> go to schools. I, I perform at schools. And teachers always ask me. I went to one uh, a year or so ago. And the teacher said, oh, they're Adam T. Newman. You know, when am I going to be in your book? Can I be in one of your stories? <laughs> and I said, I'll make a deal with you. If you promise right now to purchase a copy of the book that you are in, I will put you in the book. 
And it just so happens that in a new book that will be coming out in, in, the, in the next year, there is a Mrs. Gavin, who is a real teacher, and Mrs. Gavin is going to be the teacher in the new story. But I'm not going to tell you too much about that, because I'm going to return to the show, and we're going to read about that one later. So you yes. Just, oh, you never Absolutely. know. <laughs> I retain a lot of information. <laughs> okay, well, I, we're, I we're, we're just going to have to. We're going to have But I retain the information. <laughs> well, well um, I don't know. Maybe you can borrow a tutu to supplement for the hair. <laughs> Perhaps. I have a tutu right here. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have a tutu. <laughs> Okay, well, another question that we have is, what advice would you give someone who wants to write a story? That's a great question. That's a very, very good question. So the advice that I give uh, children of all ages, if they have an idea, whether it's writing or anything else, but I know we're speaking about uh, writing <laughs> specifically, I say, go for it. Uh, a big thing is to focus on your work and not the clock, okay? Mm -hmm. Focus on the content, focus on what, what is in your mind, what's in your heart, and put it out there. And you can share it with people. But I also want everybody to know that as great as you all are, and as wonderful as your story I know is, not everyone will love it as much as you. And that's okay. That's something you just need to understand. Not everyone's going to see your vision right away. They may later. But while you're working on it, it's always good to get some advice and share it with some friends or maybe your mom or maybe your dad or maybe your grandpa or maybe your grandma, whoever it is. Share with them what you're writing. Listen to their feedback. Now, if they don't agree on everything you put in that story, that's okay. It doesn't mean it's wrong. But maybe they have a good suggestion or a point and you might want to adjust something. The, the main thing is to stay true to your story, stay true to what you wanted to say. And remember, this is for you. You need to love what you are producing. And if you love it, really, that's all that matters. Because if you love it, more people will, I promise you. So stay with it. And, I, and if you guys are writing something, I'd love to hear it. You can always email me or find me on social media. I will give you my honest opinion. Yes, absolutely. And... We love your books here at Read with Carolee, but do you have any additional books that you loved when you were growing up? I, you know what? I have so many. And if you watch a previous episode, I do a little talk about The Giving Tree, which I really yes. like. But this is a book that I don't know if many people have, have heard about. Maybe you have. This was a book, one of my favorites, I read almost every night when I was a kid, and it's called there's a nightmare in my closet. Oh. It's by uh, Mercer Mayer. And this story is about a little boy who, who is, he's afraid of the dark because he's afraid to go to bed. He thinks there's a monster in his closet that's going to come out and get him. He's mm. Now, that's how I was when I was, I w when I was little, I was really afraid. I had to make sure the closet was, was completely shut. <laughs> I had to make sure my blanket was wrapped over my, I didn't want to have little uh, toes hanging out or hands hanging out because the monster would come and grab me. So I was very, <laughs> very scared until I read this book. And this book, the boy was very similar to me. He was afraid of the monster. But one night he said, you know what? I've had enough. I'm tired of being scared of this monster. I'm going to show the monster who's boss. I'm going to show the monster that I'm tough. And as he waited that night, he's in bed with one eye open. The closet does. The monster does come out. And he's ready for him. He's like, I got you, monster. I'm ready for you. And the monster started to cry. And the monster got scared. <laughs> turned out the monster was more afraid of the boy than the boy was of the monster. Yes. And love this and they wound up actually becoming really great friends i mean i kind of gave you the idea of the story it's a great story especially for little ones who might be a little bit afraid of the dark or or have fears of you know nightmares and monsters because i was i was that way and you won't even believe no one believes it and it's a true story there was a movie i saw back back in the olden days <laughs> that i saw that that the character, the main character scared me so much. Now, mind you, I could watch any horror movie and I was not afraid of it. All the nightmare on Elm Streets and all that stuff. But 
but but Carrie Lee, do you think you know what what fun loving family loving character scared the whatever out of me? I am trying to think, but uh, maybe because of the voice. Was it? Home. Oh, home. E.T. <laughs> I had to leave the theater. I was so scared of E.T. Oh, I, I don't know why, because everyone loved him and he and it was so cute. But when I was little, I was convinced E.T. was coming for me. And uh, so, but I got over it. Well, you know what, Adam? You're not the only one. I did not like E.T. either. <laughs> I mean, I love the movie, and I actually, it's one of my favorites right now. I, I love it now. Yeah. But as a kid, it it scared me, and, and I don't know what, why. I, I couldn't even tell you. You know, the, the vampires and mummies, none of that scared me, but E.T. The did, face kind of scared me a little, so, yeah. I, and, I understand, yeah. But you know what, Adam, it is always a pleasure to have you here and we thank you for kicking off season two with us um i know your books are definitely ones that children will cherish and uh we cannot wait to see what more is coming from you because this, this is awesome and we will love to have you back I would love to be back. One last thing before we go. I wanted to tell you when I did write How to Fight a Cold, I added a new feature that I have throughout all of my other books. So Ooh. I actually dedicated this book to my kids and my nieces and nephew, all five of them. Awesome. Harley and Tyler are my kids, and Eva, Kai, and Liv are my nieces and nephew. There are five, five of them, and I converted them into little boogers because they're my little boogers. <laughs> And while you read the story, I want you can see the little boogers. You have to search for the five hidden boogers and pick them out. If you happen <laughs> to find a sixth hidden booger in any of the story, it means someone added one, and that, my friends, is disgusting. <laughs> so, the fun little fact about the books: you get a story, you get great artwork, and you get a built-in game. Well, thank you again, Adam, and thank you to our friends for joining us for another great season of Read with Carolee. We have so many wonderful authors coming by, and it's so great to start this off with one of our favorites, Adam T. Newman. So as we say here at Read with Carolee, grab a book and read. Thanks for joining us. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.